hello, welcome to another one of these little YouTube clips I've been trying to keep up with. Uh, been a lot of requests for them. Um, can't keep up with every single request and stuff like that, but there will, I promise you, will be more and more videos coming up every single couple of weeks, hopefully. Trying to catch a few more fish for the cameras. Um, find myself today on a lake where that's probably not going to happen. Uh, the conditions and the weather is very much stacked against me. I'm going to try, but it's, it's not a very productive lake. Chances of me actually catching are very slim, but you know, you never know. You've got to be in it to win it, as they say. It's the 1st of March today, which is freezing cold. Uh, it's 8 degrees maximum temperature in the day and 1 degrees night temperature, maximum temperature. So, uh, got me thinking. When do you pick your swims? How do you maximise your chances when you can't you can't find fish? You can't go around the lake and say, "Ah, oh, there's fish rising over here." Uh, you have to you have to actually work out a swim from the weather. And I just want to show you how to do that and how to maximise all your tactics in order to fish effectively for the weather. So you can sort of get an idea, build an idea around where the fish are going to be. If that sort of makes sense, if I haven't just rambled at that, I probably have, but bear with me. Um, that phone call basically destroyed my pattern of thought, so I'm a bit everywhere now. Um, what I was trying to get to is the wind. The wind does definitely determine what swim I go in most of the time. If there's a fresh wind, which is a wind that's been blowing into a corner and it's just started blowing, it's been blowing maybe a couple of days, something like that, uh, first place I'll look is in that corner. I'll follow the end of the wind normally. Um, if it's freezing cold and it's a cold wind, then fish will tend to come off the back of it. Also, fish will tend to be on the back of the wind or the side of the wind when the wind gets stale. So if a wind has been blowing into a corner for several days, a week maybe, the wind starts to get stale and they'll move off the back of it. They won't necessarily be on the very end of the wind. Um, so what it is is all the natural food gets pushed into the corners. That's what I'm trying to get at. All the natural food goes right in and the fish know that. And some some lakes is textbook, textbook basically. They definitely go to the very end of the wind every single time. But uh, angling pressure can actually determine different factors of it. Angling pressure can cause fish not to follow the wind at all because they know that anglers will be at the end. So there is very many factors and you'll have to work that out on your lake, but a good rule of thumb is follow a fresh wind and look to the sides of a stale wind or even the back on the back of a cold wind. Okay, basically, I'm gonna move on to pressure now. Um, pressure is uh, it's the air pressure divers and stuff like that they rely on the air pressure if you think to yourself diving down to the bottom depths for swimming pool you feel that crushing sensation that's down to pressure it's down to air air pressure and uh, uh, I can't remember by bo barometer uh, I don't know I can't remember barometers but uh, something like that uh, you're not here for a science lesson let's be honest um, basically the pressure at the moment is 1038 and that is very very high pressure a low pressure would be around the thousand mark this is 1038 which is a definitely a high pressure this is one of the highest pressures I've fished in in a long while definitely the highest pressure this year um, so what I've had to do is fish react differently to pressure when the pressure is low the fish tend to stick hard on the bottom and they tend to feed a lot more. If you go to some lakes, um, particularly a lake called Carthagena, I fished a little while back, uh, fishing there, you could actually predict when you'd get a run due to the pressure. You'd go for a weekend or something like that and if it was over about 10, 17, it would, the pressure would just be very difficult and you'd blank. Uh, quite often you'd blank, you'd have to do something a bit special Sometimes I'd have to put two kilos of bait in, even if it was cold weather, I'd put two kilos of bait in over each rod just so I could get the fish down and feed it onto it. Because um, they just weren't there otherwise, I had to get something to pull the fish down. Um, high pressure, fish tend to be up in the layers of the water, especially around this sort of springtime. It's not exactly springtime, it's still very cold. Now, 
in this high pressure circumstances that I find myself in at the moment, I've, uh, I've used a zig rig. Now, some people may not know what a zig rig is. Basically, a zig rig is a pop up that you pop up anywhere in the layers of the water to basically pick up fish at whatever depth they are. You can change this zig rig to have it one foot off the bottom, two foot off the bottom. You can have it two inches from the top. There's nothing to say you can't even have it on the top. Um, I have got two different types of zig rigs on. I've got one three foot and one six foot, and I'm fishing it very close to the margins and uh, I'm fishing a bit into open water so I'm just playing, basically playing about with the depths because I want to find the depth that the fish are at and if I can find that then there's a good chance of them taking it. Um, you can use a pop-up on it, lots of people catch on pop-ups, you can use a brightly coloured pop-up, you can use a white pop-up but uh, what I like to do is sort of simulate a bug and uh, I'm fishing a piece of black foam like that, a bit of black foam, a size 7 uh, fang X hook um, I, I do like to go smaller but I caught, caught short really and I've had to use uh, Nash Bullet, very good mainline but um, as a standard uh, the double strength, Drennan double strength is the way forward for zig rigs there isn't really, there's other options of course but it's just, it's the way forward really <laughs> um, so that's basically that, you can sort of gauge high pressure it can be worth switching to a zig rig and to maximize your chances sometimes some lakes just won't do it on the bottom when the pressure is very high and you will find this up and down the country pressure has a big part to play in it and we could go onto the moon but I probably would go into a, about a two weeks trying to explain the phases of the moon and how the full moon works but uh, I'll leave that for another video. Until then, be lucky.